So, after a couple of leaks and months of rumours, it's now official, the Canon EOS R8 is available for pre-order and it's going to be shipped before the end of the year. So what is the Canon EOS R8? It's basically a modified EOS R, where the A stands for astrophotography. So firstly, the infrared cutoff filter has been replaced by one which allows more light from hydrogen alpha emission nebula to pass through onto the sensor. If that doesn't make any sense to you, you might want to go and watch my video about astro modified cameras because it explains it in a lot more depth. But basically, I'll give you a little summary. Stock cameras capture light in the visible spectrum. However, filters in front of the sensor block a lot of the reds, especially the deep reds. And this is particularly bad for hydrogen alpha emission nebulae because their wavelength of light that they admit is 656 nanometers, which is within that sort of deep red of the spectrum. So examples of hydrogen alpha emission nebulae would be uh, the North American nebula and the Pelican nebula. Uh, and in the winter night sky, you've got the Orion complex, you've got the California nebula, the Rosette nebula, and you'll see they all have this sort of deep red, almost pinkish color to them. Uh, which gets filtered out by most stock DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. So the EOS R has a different filter in front of the sensor and it allows the light of those objects to pass through and Canon claims it has four times more sensitivity in the hydrogen alpha. The other difference and the only other difference between the EOS R and the EOS R A is a 30 times digital zoom in live view so you can focus a lot better on the, you know, the pinpoint stars. So this is a nice welcome feature. But it's essentially an EOS R with a different IR filter that allows hydrogen alpha light to come through and 30 times zoom for focusing on stars. So let's check out the price. Okay, so 2,579.99. Now how much is the EOS R? 1949 600 pound cheaper and the EOS R comes with an EF adapter so you can use all of the old Canon lenses it doesn't appear that the EOS R A comes with any adapters for your old lenses um, and it's 600 pound or if you look at it this way without the adapter it's 800 pound more expensive I, I, that's that's really not justified. It's just a slightly different filter inside an EOS R, and it's eight hundred pound more expensive. Like I don't, I can't see how that's justified. There's no other differences. You may as well buy an EOS R and send it to a company that astro modifies and save yourself quite a few hundred pound. Or at the very least, at this price point, they could include the adapter so you can use EF lenses or Siemens it's an astrophotography camera they could have included an RF to T adapter um, because a T mount will allow you to mount the camera onto a telescope which is largely what they touted it for but you have to buy the T adapter separately it doesn't come with one and they missed a real good trick here they could have included or at least created a package with the EF adapter that has the drop-in filter system and you could have had a drop-in filter for the light pollution filters and even a narrowband hydrogen alpha emission filter which would have been super useful for astrophotographers but and I bet they've missed another trick because astrophotographers typically have exposures that are one minute, two minutes, three, multiple minutes long and yet all camera manufacturers limit the exposure to 30 seconds. And I bet they've done it on this camera. I bet you a fiver. I'm only speculating, but I have a feeling that it's probably limited to a 30 second exposure. And if you want to do a bulb exposure, you either have to buy a separate intervalometer or shutter release or use some kind of annoying application. So, you know, if you're going to make a camera for astrophotographers, now is a good time to remove that 30 second limit on the shutter and just allow us to choose whatever shutter speed we want. Ah, but Canon, oh, I was so excited for this camera and it's still a very exciting camera, but that price tag has just ruined it. Like, oh, I used to shoot with the Canon 6D and I was very excited for the 6D Mark II and again, Canon have made me feel like a 10 year old boy opening a box on Christmas day to find a dead dog. And this time, it's a very expensive dead dog. 
But let's, negatives aside, let's kind of look at the positives. Firstly, obviously, it's quite nice that a manufacturer is catering for astrophotographers. I think it was about seven years ago that Canon made the crop sensor DSLR 60DA. Uh, and in between now, then and now, we had the Nikon D810A, which was also very, very expensive. And now it's discontinued and very hard to find second hand. But the EOS RA is the first mirrorless astro modified full frame camera on the market, at least stock. I personally have had an astro modified mirrorless full frame camera for over a year now because I had my A7S II astro modified by JTW Astronomy. But this is the first one you can buy off the shelf. And of course, if you modify yourself, you're, you're losing the warranty on the device. So at least with this, you have a warranty with Canon and you don't have to break the warranty. I also quite like the settings dial on top, the little screen on top to tell you what settings you're using. Uh, that's one thing I really miss when shooting with the, the Sony system. And of course the fully articulating screen is going to be super useful, especially when using telescopes because you quite often find the camera in very awkward positions and it's nice to have that articulating screen. So, I mean it's still a very exciting camera. But that price tag really just feels so unjustified and just feel like, I mean, it's almost insulting. They're just really taking advantage of the astrophotography community and I don't know, I still want to get my hands on one. I still really want to try one out. At the very least, Canon doesn't mess with RAW files. Um, the Sony cameras that I use have a spatial filtering on the RAW files, which you cannot turn off. And this can sometimes lead to a very peculiar star color and just a very interesting noise pattern. Uh, but at least with Canon, the raw files are completely raw. They're untouched and uncompressed and there's no filter in or anything applied to the raw files. And being a 30 megapixel full frame camera, I'd be quite excited to test it out. It is an RF mount and there's not many RF mount lenses yet. Uh, there is the 15 to 30 f2.8 or the f2. Uh, which does look quite promising uh, but of course you can use all the old Canon lenses if you have the Canon EF adapter which doesn't come included but I don't know you could buy a 6D for £500 and a, the Canon 6D uh, is still holding its own against modern cameras it's still a really good camera for low light photography and astral photography and you can pick one up for about £500 and send that off to be modified and you can probably get four of those for the price of a Canon EOS RA with an EF adapter. And if you really want the articulating screen, you could get a Canon 6D Mark II and have that modified because the 6D Mark II comes with an articulating screen. So I don't know. I'm really unsure about this camera. I still want to try it out. But let me know what you guys think. Get in the comments below. Are you going to be buying a Canon EOS RA? Do you think it's too expensive? Have I missed something here? Is this amazing? I don't know. Um, and yeah, please like this video, subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any more astrophotography content. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.